We have um, effectively two buckets of challenges. Uh, the first bucket are customs related and, and tariff related. And I'll give you an example. So I, am, I, I live in South Africa, but I'm actually Ghanaian. I'm originally from Ghana. We source um, a lot of our fabric from Ghana. Uh, if you source fabric from Ghana to produce garments in South Africa, um, there is currently no preferential treatment for fabric that is coming from another African country um, outside of SADC uh, to, to, in, to, to South Africa. So the, 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 the customs regime would treat the imports of fabric from another African country, say in West Africa, no different from it would um, if we were importing the fabric from China, for example. And then you bring the fabrics into South Africa, you make these lovely garments, and then you decide to sell some of these garments back in Ghana, right? So the inputs came from Ghana and now the finished product some of it is going back to Ghana. And the customs regime in Ghana um, does not have a way to recognize that Ghana was actually part of the supply chain. And therefore, the treatment of the products that are coming back into Ghana would be no different as if the products were made uh, with, uh, uh, coming in from China with, 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 without any input from, from, from Ghana. So, so these are the kinds of challenges that, that we face as far as, as far as tariffs are concerned, both tariffs on inputs and tariffs on, on finished goods. What um, about the, the costs? Other... May I ask you, what about the costs? How much does it cost for tariffs? So um, it, it is quite expensive. So um, the tariffs on, on, on inputs averages around 25%. Mm -hmm. And then the tariffs on, um, on, on finished goods um, is, is around 40%. So obviously the, uh, there's an incentive to bring in inputs, but, but it's still quite high at 25%. And then, uh, and then at 40% for finished goods, it's, it, it makes, uh, you know, especially in clothing, it makes it quite, quite, quite expensive. Uh, the, other, um, the other challenge we've had, um, which, which has now been accentuated by COVID, is we all know that um, because of COVID, e-commerce has become really important. Um, everybody is now shopping online because we now can't move around as freely as we used to. Um, again, when you look at customs regimes across the African continent, um, a lot of them do not yet have um, effective treatment for e-commerce products. So if you bought something and then try to return it, it is treated in most African countries, in 99% of African countries, it is treated as if you were importing a new product. So the rules for recognizing um, products that are leaving the country so that they can come back in, again, uh, duty-free in the event of an e-commerce return, and we all know that uh, you know, returns are a very important part of e-commerce, uh, is, uh, is, 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 is requires further development. Uh, and as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a small business that is actively engaged in e-commerce, um, that has a pan-African supply chain, these are some of the challenges that, uh, that we, we experience. I want to appreciate what Samuel has mentioned about the, uh, the tariffs and the lack of preferential trade um, agreements in the different blocks of, of Africa. And I will give an example of when we were doing the wine business in Uganda and we were importing wines from South Africa. We, the, the challenge we had besides the red tape was also the tariffs, the, the custom duties that we had to pay. And if you calculated um, how much you were paying to remove the entire shipment from uh, customs where we were holding the product, it was 50% of how much we were paying for the shipment itself coming from uh, South Africa. And, and that is really unfortunate because it means that not enough trade is going on between uh, countries within the African continent. But now when you look at, for example, the agriculture sector where we're also um, involved in is that one of our clients, he finds it better trading outside of the African continent because 
he will get more for his bottom line. That is because people outside of Africa, for example, Europe and uh, United Arab Emirates are paying a higher value for the product as opposed to if he sells it in the local market. And this is really unfortunate for growing the African economy and alleviating us out of poverty because it means that um, we are not doing enough to boost trade amongst the Africans, but also to help with improving things that could help, you know, develop the Africa, Africa as a whole. Yes. And what is your suggestion? How to boost trade in Africa? Well, uh, the first thing would, in my opinion, would be um, the removing the, the tariffs or reducing the tariffs, also expanding the um, preferential trade uh, treatments. So not just having regional blocks, let's say SADCA and ECOWAS, but you know, having an open trade system, which the uh, free trade agreement is supposed to be doing because that will go a lot towards reducing the operational expenses of a lot of these businesses because most of the businesses we work with are young, they're, they're run by, by youth-led entrepreneurs and they are competing against um, international businesses that already have the financial muscle to trade across or through the barriers that they have. Whereas a small and medium sized uh, business doesn't have that financial muscle to pay that extra, you know, tariff or duty that they need to be able to sell the stock they need to. Maria, thank you so much so far. Let us move to Stephen. Stephen, how does your daily work look like at the moment or um, the daily work um, of your company? <clears throat> so thank you, Hannah. Good morning, everyone. Um, Yeah, a lot of what I, I, I've just heard, and, and you know, particularly from Samuel, from the, the challenges that, that we have, we see every day. Um, the Deutsche Post DHL Group is in every um, country in sub and in Africa, known as DHL, and, and we see these problems every day. The other challenges that we face um, are the lack of modernization within sort of border, border controls, customs regimes. Um, some countries have modernized, moved to digitalization, a lot haven't. Um, you, know, the, you know, the ratification, for example, and implementation of trade facilitation agreement, um, that has not gone as far as it, as it should do. So what we see is that very often the bureaucracy is often opaque as well. It's not as clear to businesses what sort of regulations they need to follow. And sometimes they change very quickly as well. You know, we had one country recently they literally changed the regulations overnight and it had a massive impact on our ability to, to manage the volumes that we have. Um, you know, obviously the vast majority of our business is inbound and outbound Africa because we're, a, we're, a, we're an international company, but of course we do move intra Africa as well. And, and the sort of things that, you know, particularly Samuel was raising, we see as well. We have a number of development programs, as uh, you know, as, as Dr. Kacha mentioned earlier on, we have a very close relationship with the German government on, on development projects, trade facilitation projects, and programs we're involved. We also have our own um, internal programs where we, where we work together with SMEs to help them um, principally export. It, we work with a number of, of champions for um, multi small and medium enterprises across Africa. And the most cost effective way for us to, to do that would be for them to consolidate in one country. And what we're finding is because of the border problems that, that have just been highlighted, particularly by Samuel, we can't do that. What we're, what we're doing is we're having to facilitate whereby the micro small and medium enterprise is supported in their own country and then has to export directly which has a greater cost rather than consolidating in one place. And this is, again, it's very similar. This one is also in the fashion industry. And this is, again, these are premium products where, again, there, there will be a, a value chain within Africa. And, and this is an opportunity that we see um, at the moment is missing. Um, but we're pretty, you know, I'm optimistic about where we will go. I'm very optimistic about the AFCFTA. There's a lot of groundwork that needs to be done still. 
particularly if we're looking at the the ambition of having you know a, a, a single market an internal market with Africa some of the border and tax policies need to change you know the, the issue of tariffs between African countries and you know not not recognizing the value add of intra-African supply chains for final export that needs to that needs to change that needs to be implemented if Africa is to benefit to the extent that it should do. Okay, thank you, Stephen, for this very clear words. And Lirato, let us get you in. Nice to see you. What problems do South African companies have um, that want to export? Do they contact you with complaints? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. First of all, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, give a South African view and particularly a South African government view uh, on this conversation. I really, I mean, I think you've seen, I've been nodding, right, as, as the input has been given by uh, the different contributors, because the reality on the ground is that doing business and trading um, on the African continent is very, very difficult. It's difficult for any operator. And that's the reason why from our perspective, we believe that the CFTA will be a game changer because the aim is to address exactly the issues that have been raised by our business persons and practitioners here. Um, for example, now, as at the 1st of January, um, we'll begin to trade under the CFTA. And the ambition is that 90% of products on the, traded on the African continent should be tariff free. So that will then begin to address some of the tariff concerns um, that, that, that our, our business persons have. Another issue that uh, is being focused on um, considerably through the CFTA as well as the issue of trade facilitation and making sure that we deal with at the border blockages, um, you know, onerous documentation that is required. There's been already calculations made that it costs around 40% in competitiveness, just the compliance requirements that mm -hmm. businesses have to have to deal with. Um, in SADC, I think it's even higher. I think we got a number of like 60% um, because of the inefficiencies, you know, the delays at the borders from an infrastructure uh, standpoint, backlogs at Bide Bridge and, 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 and the like. So one of the key things as well that we are doing under the CFTA is to make sure that we ameliorate that burden on, on business persons in transiting their goods and looking at, at, at um, the logistics and the, and the transit costs um, in that regard. And, and the phase two, and I'm glad that Sam mentioned it because this is one of the areas we don't talk about. Um, right now we're in phase one of the CFTA, which looks at the, uh, the tariffs and, and the trade in goods, looks at rules of origin as well, which are going to also help the, one of the issues that was raised around um, how we are comparable um, how how the trade is comparable to to the rest of the world? So there's nothing special about 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 uh, treatment of African goods. So we're looking at at using our rules of origin to encourage a lot of value addition to happen on the continent. So that when a product is considered a made in Africa product, there's a lot of value on the continent, and there's a lot of benefits that will accrue to that value. Um, so we are we are busy as well with 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 the trade um, the rules of origin ne negotiations that are going to to deal with with that fact. Um, so, so what is important um, is that we need to make sure that we attract the necessary investments that are required. Uh, we know that the CFT is going to enable the opening up, particularly at the level of tariffs. But once we begin to talk about the logistics challenges and the bottlenecks on the continent, it's an issue of not having the right interconnectivity and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, projects that we have fully funded, that, that the rest of the world has, has participated in. So for us as a South African government, the approach has been that um, while we have the CFTA, we also have to make sure that there's a strong in infrastructure drive on the continent that we put our effort behind. And there's a strong industrialization drive on the continent that we put our effort behind. So it's about also mobilizing intra African investments and global investments to come and work with us to build the infrastructure that we need to build efficiencies as well as to build productive capacity. Because our challenge is that we can get rid of tariffs all we want, but if you're not producing anything, it's not going to help. Or we can produce products like SAM and, and, and the pioneers are doing, but if the logistics infrastructure and the energy infrastructure and the industrial infrastructure that's supposed to be supportive and enabling is not there, um, then again, you know, it's, it's, it's a lose-lose. So yes. for us, the, the, the going forward is the three pillar 
integration process of the market integration, dealing with the tariffs issues, at the same time, make sure that we deal with the infrastructure uh, backlogs and, 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 and the rehabilitation of the infrastructure that we have and the, the redesign of African infrastructure that is more interconnected and not just leading outward as per colonial map. Okay. And also okay. now dealing with the manufacturing and, and, and the contribution um, to, 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 to and the investments in the manufacturing space. Mm -hmm.